You fail! Alright, so, listen. Have you ever thought what is the worst album of all time? Well, the answer of that question is completely subjective. It's impossible to get in a consensus over which is the worst album of all time, but we can get one idea of what it might be based on the opinions people post on the internet. And there is this one website called RateYourMusic.com. In there, you can give scores to the albums you've listened and write reviews, and in one of the tabs of the site, you can check the most beloved albums by the users of the site and also the most hated albums. And for today's video, I'll be listening to the 10 worst albums of all time according to users of Rate Your Music. Why? So I can keep you from the curiosity of passing through this suffering. And also because I'm an idiot and I like to suffer. Help me. Here's how I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be a countdown, I'll be talking about the 10th place first and gradually we're gonna get worse and worse. This is not a Watch Jojo episode, because I didn't make the list. Thousands of people on the internet did. So, now, no more stretching, let's do it. Alright, so, this is the album that is in 10th, it's Daddy's Boy Into the Closet Part 1. Before talking about this album, I actually want to introduce the album that's in 9th place too, because I wanna talk about both albums in the same context before actually talking what the songs inside of those are like. So, here it is. The album in 9th is Tom Sawyer's Mama. Not the Mark Twain character, not the Rush song, just an artist called Tom Sawyer. And why do I say that I wanna talk about both Daddy's Boy and Tom Sawyer together? Simple. These two aren't albums. And then you might ask now, what do you mean Marshall? Of course these are albums, this is the 10 worst albums of all time list. And then I answer. No, these were indeed released as albums, but they very much aren't albums. Why? Well because they don't have any actual musical merit inside of them. In the next eight albums in this list at least they can say that they attempted to make something that resembles music. But for these two, well, they're just jokes, and not even good ones. All start with Daddy's Boy. The album opens with the intro of Coldplay's Clocks, but quote-unquote, sampled. Let's really emphasize the quotes there, because that's so well camouflaged that the official post of the album actually has a copyright of the original song. It basically sounds like a 12-year-old using Audacity for the first time, and it lasts for six entire minutes. After that we have the second track, that begins with deafening guitars and Soulja Boy for some reason, then more Coldplay but at least a little more worked on. And after that a guy start to talk about whatever, based on the dialogue of the entire thing, he's clearly high as a kite. At one point he literally goes to the bathroom. The third track is just a bunch of forced jokes and a Spiderland reference for some reason and the fourth and final track is just him speaking like he's comatose. In the site, this album is categorized as a musical comedy, but I don't see anything musical or comic about it. In fact, it's just completely awkward, and I seriously doubt this was a serious attempt at making something funny. This is just plain lazy stuff that its author just did for attention. Which brings me to Tom Sawyer once again, in a similar style to Daddy's Boy Into the Closet. Mama has no music being made, it's stolen tracks in the background with the title of the track being repeated over and over with a bad microphone. After the intro of the album that was most likely stolen, the actual first song of the album begins. Smash. That's the Smash Bros brawl theme under the exact same circumstances I just explained before. Smash. Smash. After that we have Thanos dies. Again, exact same thing but with a song that I couldn't recognize. Thanos dies. And for the fourth track we have Gymnasium, and the song that fell victim of Tom Sawyer's rancid humor was Africa by Toto. Gymnasium. After that we have the probably ripped off outro and it's over. Now, after hearing these two records, some might ask, who'd thought someone would enjoy this? But the thing is, it's easy to see that these records weren't meant to be enjoyed. They are troll records that exist just to cause a reaction, which is what I am giving here. Therefore, these two releases aren't albums, and because of that, they are disqualified from this list. Now, let's move on to the album occupying the 8th position. Hey, 
pop the trunk, I open up, I sold my soul a good price, out of sight, and my whole got talent right, whole squad ran through that shit, yikes. I just wanted to make something clear, I know what I'm about to say sounds like a joke but it legit wasn't, it actually happened. But in the moment Lil Xan started rapping in the first track of the album, I started smelling an awful stench. It's either someone slaughtering a goat in my backyard or Lil Xan's raunchy persona infecting my PC and making it smell bad. Now onto the actual songs, they're soulless, lifeless rap music that have no substance whatsoever, it's all under those extremely generic instrumentals and the lyrics are so simple that a 4 year old can write something with more depth. Some songs here have feats, and those feats are easily the best part of the entire song, the only featless song in the entire album that is okay is saved by the bell because the beat is passable. And if you want details on how Lil Xan's vocals sound throughout the album, I can only say. He speaks like he's about to pass out through the entire album, which I don't doubt it was what was actually happening during the recordings. Before I checked this list out, I had no idea who the freak was Kevin Fadeline, so I've decided to search about it and I discovered that he married Britney Spears for a while and considering this large chunk of text here about it I assume it's related to celebrity drama and I'd rather not waste my time in there. So let's go into the record now. First things first, this record is super boring, it's like a lil scrappy ripoff. Lil Scrappy itself isn't known for being a great rapper but at least he had money in the bank and that's already a win to me. Now this record, well, I guess it starts out decent enough. The first song, The World Is Mine Is, lame. America's most hated as, okay and all, overall until like the seventh track this album keeps being just a dull stereotypical rap album with no substance, the only actually good thing I found there is the beat of Lose Control, that's actually quite good and it's sad that's being wasted in a Kevin Fadeline record. Anyway, after that there is a bunch more songs, but since they have nothing that sets them apart from the rest of this record, your ears start to get numbed from it all and it all starts to sounds like noise and you just keep thinking, how long is this, and when it finally ends you go listen to like some mob deep to recover your mental sanity. Overall at least to me, I don't think it's a terrible terrible album, Lil Xan's record was much more obnoxious. This record may have only got this much rage upon it because of whatever drama he got involved with Britney Spears, cause it's definitely not in the bottom 10 of all time. Maybe like the bottom 500. Freaking Oni Zeon. Back in the Zelda CDI YouTube poop days, I remembered Oni Z on as the banana guy, because that's pretty much all he did for the internet, and somehow, over 7 years after this thing came out and he was already reduced to ashes once again, he released this album, even though I'm pretty sure all he did during that time was to be part of a bunch of YouTube drama that I don't care. But, he managed to release this album that has over 2 and a half hours in length. 2 and a half hours. I had to sit through it all with a lot of pain in my heart, and the conclusion I got was the expected. In the first minute of the album he already shows he can't sing. The beats have no substance whatsoever. The best songs are the ones he barely sing. The song, My Peace Legit feels like a royalty-free song. I'm pretty sure the instrumentals of Oni Zeon is crazy are stolen because they actually sound good. Socio Child is 4 minutes of nothing. Women's Song has somewhat decent instrumentals too but Oni Zeon ruins it with the most unfunny misogynistic humor that there is. 9.99 gets terrible in less of 5 seconds. And most importantly, the way he tries to force as I'm a banana meme that we all already forgot is just sad. 80% of the songs of this records is him trying to be funny and failing miserably, and the other 20% is songs that are so low you can't hear them. And by the way, most of the songs have terrible instrumentals, and the few ones that have good instrumentals are ruined by his singing, he sounds like a drunk man in the karaoke at 3am. By the time I reached half of the album I simply gave up and starting paying attention to the songs like I paid attention in the chemistry classes in high school. But apparently I wasn't the only one because after track 42 he clearly gives up too and the next songs legit feel like they were made by AI due to how lifeless they are. I honestly don't know what I was expecting when I started hearing this album but honestly this album made me feel dirty. I took a break to take a shower after I finished this one. So I could feel more ready for the next album. Talking about it.
Okay, I just wasted more than two hours of my life listening to Oni Z on doing something that resembles singing. I hope this next Chris Brown record is shorter to compensate this hell. Nope. Dude. Why? No. Why 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 It's time to stop! Let's go then. Heartbreak on a Full Moon by Chris Brown. At least, it's by a big artist. It must be better, right? Well. It's better, but on very big quotation marks, just because it has a bigger intent of being played on the radio. But it's clearly not well done. In the vocals, in many songs he sings like he's got a potato in his throat, and because of that, most vocal lines that were meant to be catchy doesn't sound good. In the instrumentals, sometimes it sounds like he's copying AJR for some reason. The beats are completely bland and generic, and in some cases they're even annoying. The excessive finger snapping gets real dated real fast and most importantly. The songs are so generic to the point that some of them gives us the feeling of like, I think this song have played before, this happened with me over 10 times while I was listening to this album. Overall, this album won't hurt your ears, but will definitely bore you to death with so much of the same thing. The only enjoyable track on the 45 song madness of this thing is track 20, No Exit, but that's just because of the guitar on the instrumentals that's kinda catchy. Besides that, this album feels like a resistance test. Kudos to all the probably like two people that completed it besides me. What is wrong with you? Right, so just like Kevin Fadeline, I also had no idea who the hell Ironic Punishment Division is, and apparently they're a one-man stoner metal band. Which at first sounds good to me because some of my favorite bands of all time are stoner metal bands. But as soon as I entered their Spotify profile and saw that the most popular song in their discography is a song called Orange Man Bad, I immediately did a oof mentally. And in the album itself, that isn't on Spotify for some reason, there's a track called Triggly Puff, which gives the idea that this album was clearly made by a boomer that's trying to use memes to be political, which by itself, the idea is something that's extremely cringeworthy regardless of who does it. And he somehow makes it worse. And well, let the cringe fest begin, here's what the album is like. Some instruments, especially the drums, sounds like middies. The singer sounds like a constipated Trent Reznor. The music sounds so stupidly angry that it looks like it was written by Triggly Puff herself. All the guitar lines sound the same, except in the song Safe Spaces, where it's so distorted that it sounds like a fart being edited in FL Studio. And about the tracks, in the chorus of the song, Hole, it sounds like a really bad Bruce Dickinson impersonation. Verge is the only listenable track on the album, because the music is composed decently enough to the point that it's not so mind-numbing. And, Sign of Nazaire, sounds like a 50-year-old that just discovered about the existence of Mixcraft using it for the first time. This album promises cringe, and it gives you cringe. Okay, now this is already getting ridiculous. Oni Zeon. Again dude? Why don't you, you know, try to do something that you're actually good in? I already reviewed you once, I don't wanna keep with this kind of suffering once again. I'm just lucky this album is much shorter, and I also dodged a bullet, because the album at number 11 is also a gigantic album by him. Now, into the album. Is it any different of I'm a meme? Nope. It's basically the same level of unfunny of the latter, except it's way more annoying, however, it has the best song of both albums, Her Lies. But this is not a compliment. I can see why this album ranks higher than the other one. It has less songs, but they are a thousand times more annoying. If he combined the length problem of the other album with the aggravation of this one, we might have an album that might take the number one spot in this list. This is a tip to him, because after all, it seems like he's aiming for it. Next. Alright, so for an album to be here at the second spot, it must be rotten. I was genuinely kinda hesitant to listen to this one. Tom McDonald, I never had heard anything by him. I just know him from his song names that tell very evidently that he's a white trash rapper. So well, I said I had to listen to it, so I did. And, guys, how is this second place? No, for real, is it just here because of white boy? Cuz dude, this is actually the best album in the entire list. Is it good? No, not really. 
but compared to the previous eight albums this is actually decent. It has some good lines here and there. Castles is easily the best song I've heard in the entire list and I honestly saved it in my playlist, it has a nice emotion, great beat and his performance is well made. But in the whole thing, I do understand why it's hated. He ruins it when he goes ultra political, but when he's not in that stage, the songs vary from average to okay. The beats are boring and it's an overall tiring album to listen. But, come on guys. I have no idea how the heck this album is in the bottom 100, let alone the bottom 2. Was it all only because of White Boy? To be honest, I do think that song is not very good, the chorus is annoying, the lyrics while they somewhat speak something that exists, it's not really worthy to make a song about it because it sounds stupid and sounds like you're ignoring racism. But I've decided to rely on reactions of this song to see about it, and in general, I've seen a considerable amount of black people fine with this song, so if them are into it, and seeing it as truth, then I guess it passes, but I'm still kinda smelling a rat there. But in the overall, that's like a 3.5 out of 10 album. There's much worse around. Talking about much worse. It is time, to talk about the worst album of all time according to Rate Your Music. That is. Some of you heard the intro of In The Flesh and probably got worried it was The Wall, but don't worry, Pink Floyd is really far away from this list, the album that takes the top position is this parody of it, made by YouTuber Doug Walker, more known as the Nostalgia Critic, that just like Onision, is a dead YouTuber trying to get attention through desperate measures, and his way of doing so was by releasing this album that indeed deserves the top spot here. Why? So, let me get in the details, this album was labeled was a comedy, but trust me, I've listened to the whole thing and my face the entire time was like this. The idea here is that Doug hates the wall and he recorded this parody to explain his points on why the wall is bad, when in reality all he does is even disrespectful of the wall as an art form. Most of the critics don't even make sense and are completely shallow. It's like making a record against marijuana and all you got to say is, we bad. Not joking, the only good part of the album is the guitar work, that was made by Rob Scallon, one of the most talented guitarists on YouTube, and I really hope his paycheck was gigantic for him to let his name be associated with this travesty. Because for everything that Scallon didn't touch here, it's excruciatingly bad. And let's be honest, who asked for this? By the time this album dropped, the nostalgia critic character was already as irrelevant as Fred. And I'm pretty sure no one cared for the fact that he does not like the wall. Yet still, he had to do it. Bad move man. Bad move. Well, that was infernal. I'm just glad there was no broken side or blood on the dance floor albums in here so I'm a little relieved that my ear bleated less than I anticipated. And as a conclusion, even though I agree that all those albums are pretty bad, I don't really agree with the placing of those. So well just to end the video, I'll re-rank those albums according to my opinions on it. As I said before, I disqualified Daddy's Boy and Tom Sawyer's albums, they shouldn't be counted as music. So, I'll rank the top 8 instead. At number 8 is Death Threats. That album is seriously not that awful, it has two good songs in it and the rest is either boring or cringe. At number 7 is Playing With Fire. Again, not the worst thing in the world, but incredibly dull and awkward. The beat of Lose Control is pretty good though. At number 6 I place Heartbreak on a Full Moon. This is the first album so far that I legit believe it deserves to be in this bottom 10. It's pointless and torturing. At number 5 it is Total Xanarchy. It's pretty heinous but the feat saved it a little. At number 4 is Trigger Warning, it has all the cringe people saw on Tom McDonald with an extra dip, and it's much more lousy production wise. At number 3 and 2 it's both Oni Z on records, even though I almost considered disclassifying those two. And at number 1, Nostalgia's Critic The Wall. It fails in all the aspects it tries to be, a critic, a parody, a comedy and at being good. So yeah, those were the 10 worst albums of all time. For the love of God, compensate for my suffering by leaving a like and subscribing to my channel to show me it was worth it to make this video. My eardrums feel like they just left a torture chamber. And now I'll listen to something better to compensate this sorrow. My name is Marshall and see you next time.